Life's greatest adventures are the ones where you take a risk, throw caution to the wind, and allow yourself to just be and experience. For Mindy Bledsoe and Jennifer Stone, these are two friends who just wanted to take a road trip before a milestone life event. And what became and developed from that idea was a script in which Mindy's first foray into feature film directing began. A movie about two friends. We have been on the road now for two hours and I haven't heard any of Veronica's songs. Okay, only because it's Veronica stuff. Toothbrush, bathroom stuff. That is very vague, but check. Mags, check. That's the worst packing check ever. I sit and watch these people go to see a loveless soul, less so my eyes. We don't care, make it work, for the eyes, say it late, I'm just keeping on. You will say, I keep going. When's the last time you're home? Four years? This isn't the kind of thing where you're gonna meet like 12 cousins and see like baby bath pictures when I was five. You will say, kind of jealous of you. You have this recognizable disease. I have complex regional pain syndrome type 2. I mean, after the accident, my body hurts. I just want the pain to go away. Shutter lights. <sighs> Tell me a secret. I think that my mom left because I was never going to be Miss Team Supreme. And time is dumb. I mean, according to social norms, I should have a kid in high school by now. Instead, I can barely hold a toothbrush. She cried herself to sleep last night. I don't know how I can look her in the eye and tell her. She's going to be heartbroken. She thought our friendship and our relationship as friends was past due lying. I haven't seen this woman for 10 years, and I've had 10 years of unanswered questions. The whole trip has been about you, just like everybody else. And I'll become the anthem to the You're scared. Of course I am. So is she. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you. I don't want to stand in your way. Are we growing? We're always growing. I feel stagnant. But that's because you're hung over with your face in salt. So pack your bags as we go on a journey of self-discovery far beyond just characters in a narrative feature film. And Mindy Blitzo, who has found her footing, exploring the idea as we turn the spotlight on the here, on the now, and the in-between. like a film that had its own journey to be made. Uh, am I a little off base there? Or do you, did you feel like yeah, it's something? Actually, the making of this is, is its story in and of itself. Um, it was such a quick serendipitous moment in time. Summer of 2018, I was 39. My last summer in my 30s, and I hadn't directed a feature film yet. My working partner, uh, Rob Sinska, had just got back from a three-month trip in, from India. And we had talked about going on vacation, but then <laughs> said, why would we spend money on a vacation when we could take that money and just go make a film of our own? Like, let's go be the boss of ourselves. 
And Jennifer Stone, who I had just been friends with for just like a mere seven months, uh, she had two weeks off in the middle of nursing school. Nice. And she wanted to go on a road trip. So with all of that information, we came up with the idea of uh, going on a road trip and shooting a movie. And thus, the in-between was born. Jen has type 1 diabetes in real life, and I have complex regional pain syndrome type 2 in real life. So she and I had bonded over our, our chronic illnesses as friends, and we wanted very much to bring these, these traits to characters on screen for some representation. But we didn't yeah. want to make it about that at all. We didn't want it to be a, a sick drama movie or anything. We just wanted to have like a, a different representation of chronic illness on screen. So That's um, awesome. Yeah, so we, we, we came up with the concept in a weekend. We wrote the, a 65 page script in a week. And one month later, four of us hit the road in two vehicles. We drove 4,500 miles in 14 days and we shot this movie. So yeah, it's uh, amazing. It's a crazy story, uh, <laughs> not how I always recommend shooting a film. Everything worked in our favor for this. We took years of experience and cashed in on opportunity and, and just a moment in time. It, you know, the dialogue is so important in this movie to make it move, to make it, you know, to, to give it context and everything like that. And I'm curious, in, in your perspectives, in seeing now with Jennifer writing this, how much you talked about being real and authentic versus the level of storytelling complexity that you need for a feature film. Uh, was, the, was there conversations about that and, and how much was the, how important was that for both of you yeah. to have that? It's very important. I mean, because very important from the get go because we wanted very much, like I said, to, to make sure this film wasn't about these illnesses. So how, how to naturally always include that in the conversation letting our audience know just enough, but not inundating them with information that they don't really need to know. I fell on the ice and I could barely touch the bottom and I hit my head on something, so I don't really remember what happened, but somehow my friend pulled me out. So I guess I died for a few seconds, but I guess it just never really occurred to me to tell my parents about it. Isn't it weird how things just aren't a big deal if you don't acknowledge it? <laughs> like, when a kid hits its head and you laugh so it doesn't cry and freak out. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, I think that was kind of that way after my surgery. I was like, in so much physical pain, but I was just completely casual about how I was suffering. It was like the mental anguish was enough. I, I didn't know how to like deal with my physical pain, so I just like didn't acknowledge it. Just put it in a box, put it to the side, and think about it. So I'll talk to you later. You can deal with pain for like 30 seconds, like anyone, any kind of pain. But then 30 seconds becomes 30 minutes. 30 minutes becomes a month, and then a month becomes later but enough so they can follow the story so that that's yeah. that's balance beam in and of itself so yeah. a big help is that you know Jen, because Jen and I have these illnesses we, we bring that authenticity of, of, of depiction on screen that can't be written so to speak and it can be directed but I don't think it could be directed that well unless uh, really that person that's acting it knows it we touched on everything without without being um, informative or school-like. So with a 65-page script, we knew the conversations we wanted to have. We knew information that we wanted to get out. So we left things open for, for improv. So by no means were we married to the, the scripts in, in, in its totality. It was about, like, this is the point of what we're doing. What is the best way in this moment these characters are going to say that? So we would we would bounce around the banter in the car, and then we would wait until we found the natural naturalisticness of it. I have no idea why we started talking about my pain. I'm sorry. Dude, don't apologize. I mean, look at you. You're driving. Your pain can suck it. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> I never 
told my parents I knew they weren't in love with each other. Shit, woman. If that's not the first line of your memoir. Alright, let me go over, assholes. You gotta get over. I'm trying. Get over. God, stop yelling at me. I'm not, you're like the worst fucking NAV system ever. Let me over, dick cheese. Okay. No, hold on. Um, no, you hold on. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Are you from LA? I thought you were a better driver. I am. I'm just highly aggressive. It's the LA driving away. Did you ever see that movie, Leaving Las Vegas, with Nicolas Cage? The one where he gets like blackout drunk all the time? It's a little more nuanced than that, but yeah. I just think we shouldn't do a Nicolas Cage in Vegas. Oh yeah, there's nothing worse than like hungover driving. We have to find a perfect balance, okay, of uh, dulling all of these senses and still being able to get in this vehicle tomorrow, drive, yeah. and not throw up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. you know well, guess what? You are in luck, because I am the expert at that. Out of this entire road trip we planned, Vegas scares me the most. Isn't that depressing? Even more than Portland? I mean, Portland's gonna be like mental pain, I guess, but physical pain. <laughs> you know, it's, it's electric, it's alive, the lights, the money, the people, all the nerves. <laughs> they start going like that. You know, there's other hotels, we don't have to stay here. Oh, I did too. I just skipped it. I was just letting them know. All right, well, let's get to dulling those senses then. Uh, we're trying to check each other. Like, uh, was that there? Was that too much? So um, it helped that the four of us were all together. Talk about this being your first feature film, the ambitious nature of, of shooting primarily in a car. And talk about a little bit about how it was a short timeline too. I mean, you did this in two yeah. weeks, so it's like, mm -hmm. Was there challenges you didn't expect? Were there happy accidents? Were there things that you were like, wow, this actually works? I mean, talk about a little bit about the shooting aspect of putting this in a car well, the, like that. The first thing that I did was uh, go through and find screenshots from um, other movies. And, and I printed that out and pretty much made like a storyboard of like nice. uh, of how I thought the movie should, should look and follow. So I did that with Rob. So we had a book of that so we could always... Uh, flip to and be like this this scene. I want to recreate that this way We had that shorthand that we could always go to so we we knew what to accomplish and because there wasn't So much time when we landed in locations to <laughs> spend all that time creating <laughs> We had to go strictly with 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 the gut uh, the gut instinct of it all and having done that pre-production beforehand of kind of knowing what I wanted the movie to look like in recreations of, of other screenshots. So th that, that was also very, very hard to do. <laughs> um, so the ambitiousness of it. I am proud and happy that I didn't overthink it. Because when I think about it right now and wanting to plan out a road trip movie, I mean, no. I... <laughs> You know, there's sometimes a freedom that comes with um, a little, a, a small amount of time and a small amount of movie. I mean, uh -huh. money. Excuse me. Um, you know, you you don't you don't have time to second guess it, and you just the only choice you have is to make the best out of what you have. And we laid down our egos and just committed to that. Make the best of what we have, without ever thinking, oh, if I had this, it would be better. Oh, if I could do this, it would be better. That yeah. was no way was ever going to help our movie in the making of it, in post of it, anything. So uh, we we had the discussions beforehand. Like we just can't have these kind of talks. We just can't. We committed to what we did on the low budget end and 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 made the the best of it. That's a challenge in and of itself because as sure. an artist, you always want to make it better. I mean, I also went through and edited this movie, so it's hard to go through and be like wanting so badly to be like, oh, this would have been perfection in my head. <laughs> but, you know, after one day of calling footage, it's like, well, I can't, I can't do that. I'm yeah. not going to enjoy this movie. I'm not going to be happy with it. Yeah. So uh, learning to love 
and appreciate what the instincts of, of the filmmaking brought out was 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 very joyous, actually. Um, you know, we, we trusted ourselves and let our experience do the work and it it, it yielded a good good product. The, the funny thing, the ironic thing too is like when you do remove yourself from the car and then you're outside, which is even more daunting to try and film because you, you have the elements, you have the sound and everything like that. It, it's kind of, I, I just found that kind of ironic that when you moved out, uh, the apartment, being in that apartment must have been a welcome change for you guys in terms of, of setting up and, and being able to shoot, I would imagine. You had so Filming much in that apartment in there. was the hardest because really? I was in downtown LA and, and, and that's a 120 year old house that I was in and uh, there's a Great Dane upstairs. There's police sirens everywhere. That was actually more difficult filming than it was on the road. Um, Interesting. Yeah, especially when you're hitting the Midwest in Wyoming and stuff. Nobody cares that you're filming. You know, <laughs> no one, they're just like, whatever, go do your thing. We don't care. You know, when you're in L.A. area, California, they're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Give us all your money. No, irony in, in of itself, right there. The hardest filming was in the secured location where we actually had control. That was actually the hardest stuff to film. <laughs> and, and also adding the element of music to this, how important was that for you guys? Was that something you developed in the beginning as well, or was that something yes. that you yes. came up with through the edit? I 100% said we couldn't do a road trip movie without music. The the happiness with the music is um, Super Water Sympathy is a band that uh, Rob Sinska and I discovered back in 2012. I directed a music video for him in 2013, which actually oh, nice. played the end of the movie. Um, and then um, Super Water Sympathy later morphed into Hydrogen Child. And Rob Sinska and I, just we're just loyalists. We're big, big fans. And we called them up when we started writing the script, and we told them what we were doing, and they very graciously offered their catalog to us. So uh, we were able to finish writing the, the script with all of their music in our, in our head. And, you know, it's, it's a character of itself. No, there is no movie without that music. Uh, you know, there isn't a complete movie without that music. So it obviously was incredibly important. It's um, the most interesting character up there, I think. It's got so much to say. As you can tell, I'm a big, big fan of the, the music. So <laughs> such a supporter. And it's cool that you got what you were looking for, too, because yeah. oftentimes you you have an idea of it at the beginning and then maybe you can't get the rights. There's all kinds of right. legal things that might happen, you know, kind of thing. So yeah. that's just, that, it sounds like this movie was like uh, a barrage of happy accidents that just came together. Perfectly. It was. Like you said, serendipity. Yes. Because like, so the two weeks that we filmed was the only 14 days off that Jennifer Stone had between nursing school. Our producer, who was also our sound guy, Chris Lyon, happened to be going on vacation by himself to Hawaii, to which he canceled that trip and decided to come do, produce this movie and go on this road trip with us. Like, how everything just worked out. Here's the best, my favorite story. Character of Miles, so Mads's brother in the, in, this, in the movie. That character was not written when we started filming. Uh, so when we left LA, um, Mads' character still had all the same issues with her mom, and it was she still had the same climax. She just didn't have a brother. It was all she was going through that on her own. Somewhere outside of Las Vegas, um, Jennifer Stone got a call from a friend of hers who was on a road trip with his brother, and they were going to be in Portland around the same time we were. And he volunteered to come help if we needed any help filming that day. And Jennifer told me she's like he's also an actor, and I was like. Like, would he be on? <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure. And um, so Jen and I were like, how do we include a male character? Because A, it's also important to me that, you know, we pa pass the Lichdale test where you've got two females. It's not about the man. Anyway, and yeah. it did not be about the man. But so him bringing him that creating the, the brother character really was a good support that Mads needed and, and really a linchpin for the whole movie. And uh, um, as we drove from South Dakota to, to Portland, I rewrote the third act of the movie, sent it to Rain Jameson, who met us in Portland. He was off script. 
we did 20 pages in two days. It was crazy. I mean, talk about serendipitous. I, I'd never met him before he filmed with us. So, I mean, he came in and just, just fit right in, just like everything else that happened with this movie. Which one does he live in? Yeah, I think it's six. Miles! Stop screaming down the hall. It's like a banshee. People live here. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, there she is. How have you been? What is this situation? Oh, uh, well, I shaved it off on Oh, God. Look at you. Oh, this is Junior. Hi. Junior. Nice to finally meet you. Junior. Oh, I can't really shake, but a hug? That's right, yeah. I forgot about the, uh, the arms. I heard all about them. Yeah, I have arms. <laughs> no, I mean, she told me all about the um... issues. Yeah. 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 That's not uncomfortable. <laughs> I have complex regional pain syndrome type two. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mads has diabetes. I do. Yeah. <sighs> this is huge. <laughs> Make yourself at home. Whatever you guys want. Uh, throw your stuff anywhere. Have drinks. Fuck, man. I can't believe you live in this place. I mean, you are adulting so good, like, too good. What is it you do for a living? Software engineer. Oh. What about you? What do you do, Junior? I survive. <laughs> Okay, she's being dramatic. She writes greeting cards. Oh, neat. Mm. I'm a struggling writer with defunct hands. Poetic. Indeed. I mean, what is life without some struggle? No. So they're nihilistic greeting cards. It's a big market for that. It's huge. It's huge. I'm really rich. <laughs> I think it's really nice to stay here. This is a really bitch of place. You guys are always welcome. Plus, I would do anything in the world for this little one right now. That's so little anymore. Oh, it's good to see you again. Couldn't ask for a better first experience than this. <laughs> I think I, I, I fear that everything from here on out is going to be a disappointment for you. Maybe. Well, I wouldn't. My next film won't be done this way. I'll have so much more actual <laughs> control over <laughs> my next film. Uh, I already have scripts written for that. and uh, I mean, I'm, I'm doing minimal locations. It won't be on the road. <laughs> yeah. nice. I mean, so much control. And, like I've directed five short films and, 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 uh, and you can look back and everything is very, very specific on my films and I have very specific mm. visions uh, and wants and needs for how I like my camera set up. So I had to give up a lot of uh, control on this because sure. I couldn't control it how I wanted to. So that that's a exercise in itself too. <laughs> Plus, you were acting in it, and you were pretty much almost in every scene. So it's uh -huh. kind of like yeah, yeah. That's that's a tough. That's a tough. No, I forget that. I separate them so much in my head that sometimes I do forget because <laughs> she is acting, and then I was directing. So <clears throat> yeah. It, I know that you based these characters around who you are personally, and, and the, the, you know, and of course, um, you know, own voice acting in, in that respect, and, and you know, dealing with the chronic illness that you have and everything like that as well. But I have to imagine that Junior left a little something for you inside that you didn't expect. What What do you feel like in playing Junior that you that you're going to come away with that you might? You know, may it just resonate with you afterwards, or or that you're going to carry into what you do next as an actor, at least. That's a great question, Joe. No one's asked me that question. I love it. You know, something that Junior has that I don't is what it, what I'll call like the hallmark inside. She, she's she's um, um she's been through a lot, but she you know the whole romanticizing shot glasses and visiting where her her and her sister did. That's not me. I'm a callous kind of a of a gal with a very sick sense of humor. So I would say that that kind of giggly love that 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 Junior encompasses, I'd say that that's resonated with me. And and 
you know, letting some of that hallmark in. I don't know. Did you guys, how much of this did you shoot in sequence? Obviously, the road stuff probably was mostly in sequence, but yeah. did, you shoot, did you shoot a lot of the like, third act first and then go on the road, or was it the opposite? Or No. You... Um, so we really started, um, you know, we all started from L.A. So we most of it shot chronologically. I say like the bookends. Um, we did two pickup days when we got back. The po at the end, the apartment stuff with um, Mads and her mom. We did that at the mm -hmm. end. Some pickup stuff with uh, with Miles and her, and some pickup stuff in the apartment with with uh, a Junior in the beginning. But most stuff was shot chronologically. Like um, hotels, uh, I couldn't, I can't quite remember because the hotels that we or motels. Let's be real about that. Um, sure. that, <laughs> that we shot in, we, we also see. It is indie film after all. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yes, easy easy to the gorilla film in there. But there was a few scenes where it's like it's like actually three different hotel rooms that we're filming in, and it's all played off as one. You know, we we did have a few challenges with that, but most everything was shot chronologically, which I mean, luckily helped immensely with adding a character, mm -hmm. uh, rewriting that that third act that's in Portland. So um, yeah, that was. The Portland stuff was towards the end. I mean, the last thing we shot on the road was uh, Junior on the Beach. Ooh, yeah, nice. Yeah, that was the last thing we shot on the roads. I asked that because there is a very, very stark pivot moment in this film where it pivots and it changes and and the characters drastically change in, in, in just, a, you know, a step of, of, you know, just a moment at a time. And, it's, and, and so... With all that going on, with you directing, where you guys are in a car, where you're acting and you're improving in, in the car, to for your process and as you know being involved in that, how much of that did you did, was that the stuff that you guys really took your time on because that's so important to this film and it layers it so deeply and I'm just curious yeah. your approach in that respect. Well, and I talked about before we left, like we had thought about going uh taking the different route and actually shooting it backwards mm -hmm. but we we stuck with chronologically for the mere fact of so much in so little time um it's hard to depend on 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 acting when it comes to that that exhaustion that you start to feel on a road trip it's easier for us to have the authenticity of us being really exhausted to let that mix in on the third act so like these are definitely things we thought about we knew that there were scenes that we had we we had to be building to to that third act. Sure. Okay? sure. Um, right. Yeah, and 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 that's why we stuck to trying to shoot chronologically as much as possible because we could keep bringing those authentic moments on screen without overly directing them or forcing yeah. them out or writing that scene. Um, that exhaustion and that little frustrations are there because. There, so I, you know, almost blurring that line of narrative and documentary, you know, <laughs> whole new hybrid of film, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's an interesting approach because it works so well here. So yeah. it's yeah. yeah. Uh, so what do you love about indie film? What is it that you cherish? I, I, I love making a story. I love creating. I love characters. I love quirky things about characters and I love seeing that on screen. So I just always want to be a part of that and do that. Like I feel complete and happy when I am directing first and foremost. Like I just love telling someone about a character and watching them bring that character to life. That is the most joyous thing I've ever experienced. I, I just want to keep doing that. I just want to make a living doing fun stories and, and, and stories that have representation because I, I, I like, I like my horror comedy movies that I always kind of want to bring some kind of representation to screen that I, I haven't quite seen before in some, some manner. Um, you know, if that's with just plus size women, if that's with chronic illnesses, if that's with people of color. I just, I want to see the stories we've all already seen just told from somebody else's perspective.